Hello everyone, this is João from Salmonella Place and today we're going to talk about restriction endonucleases. These are very important tools, very important enzymes that are used in research nowadays and I'm sure that you have heard about these type of enzymes in your biology class or in your molecular and cellular biology class. Now what I want to do is give you just a brief introduction on this tutorial on restriction endonucleases, enough for you to carry on talking about more complex topics. Now, as I mentioned before, these are enzymes. So these are enzymes that are able to cleave DNA. And by cleaving DNA, I mean by cutting DNA at specific sites, as you can see here, and then it can be used to manipulate this molecule or to use it for further research. But we're going to understand how restriction endonucleases work on the DNA molecule on this tutorial. Before we go into more details on restriction endonucleases, I would like to give you two brief definitions. The first one is restriction, present in the name restriction endonucleases. Restriction basically means that you are breaking a double-stranded DNA into fragments, very important, by a restriction enzyme. So basically, in other words, restriction means that you're going to cleave or cut a DNA molecule into smaller fragments. And this is definitely part of the function of endonucleases or restriction endonucleases. Now, the second definition that I would like to give you is modification. And this means that changes in an organism caused by environment or an activity also can be caused by enzymes because you're going to see enzymes that are called modification something something aces and what they do is they they change the organism in such way uh, but in a way that is not transmissible to the offspring so whatever change is caused in modification the offspring will not have it so we talked about restriction versus modification, so we can start understanding what restriction endonucleases do. Now I need to make a distinction between endonucleases versus exonucleases, because you will also see uh, in biology a lot of en enzymes with the name exonucleases. One thing in common between these two enzymes is that they cut DNA, but endonucleases, as the name indicates, endo, cuts DNA from the inside of the molecule. Now, exonucleases, like also the name indicates, exo, means that these enzymes will cut DNA from the ends. And I have here an illustration, a simple illustration that shows a DNA molecule and where these enzymes will usually act. So you can see at the extremities or the ends of the molecule, exonucleases acting or cutting DNA pieces of DNA, and usually in the center or somewhere inside of the molecule, you will find endonucleases, so endonucleases. So now you're starting to see what a restriction endonuclease will do. So now it's time to discuss where can we find restriction endonucleases. And I have here an image of a bacterium. So this is to tell you that you find restriction endonucleases in bacteria. And now you are a very smart scientist in the lab and you need an enzyme that will be able to cleave DNA into specific um, fragments so you can then further study them. Then you will go to bacteria and extract restriction endonucleases from them and use it. Now, why do bacteria need restriction endonucleases, you may be asking? Well, there are these viruses that love to use bacteria to replicate, to create more little viruses. And what they do is they will usually inject, so they will inject viral DNA into bacteria, in this case into this bacterium here, and what happens then is that this D viral DNA will be able to replicate in the right conditions and form more virus, but then will eventually 
destroy this cell. Now, what bacteria were able to do were to, through evolution, use restriction endonucleases, which will bind, let's say, to this DNA and cleave it. So this viral DNA will be cleaved into fragments and will be, therefore, unable to replicate and produce more viruses. So these restriction endonucleases that you see here will protect this cell, this bacterium, from viral DNA. Now, you may be asking if these restriction endonucleases cleave the viral DNA into fragments, preventing it from replicating and creating more viruses, how do bacteria found a way to protect their own DNA, as you can see here. This is bacterial DNA. So how do, you, do they protect them? Well, they have other enzymes called modification. Remember from the previous slide where I defined modification, methylases. These are enzymes that are able to add methyl groups to the DNA, the bacterial DNA, and therefore will prevent restriction endonucleases from cleaving this, uh, this bacterial DNA. So modification methylases add the methyl group to the bacterial DNA, preventing restriction endonucleases from cleaving and leaving then restriction endonucleases with the only function of destroying this viral DNA that tries to produce more little viruses using this bacteria as this bacterium as a host. So what I have been telling you so far is that restriction endonucleases are enzymes that cleave DNA, the DNA molecule are at particular sites. Now one important thing to add is that these specific sites or sequences are between four to eight base pairs. Let me add here base pairs. These sequences are known as palindromic sequences, which means that they can be read the same way both forward and backwards. And an example or two examples of these sequences, I have two here, that you can see that if we read G-A-A-T-T-C, and if we go backwards, we also read G-A-A-T-T-C. So this is a palindromic sequences. Now, restriction endonucleases will find these type of sequences in a DNA molecule and then use them to cleave at that particular site or sequence. Now, I have two examples here of palindromic sequences because I need to also tell you that restriction endonucleases are able to cleave in two different ways. Now the first one that we have here is a palindromic sequence that is associated to this restriction endonuclease known as E. R1, which is found in E. coli bacteria. And this palindromic sequence belongs to or is associated to this restriction endonuclease known as ALU1. Now, what ECOR1 does when it finds this particular palindromic sequence, it will cleave or will produce a staggered cleavage, which is done in this manner. So this is a staggered cleavage. And ALU1 will do it differently. It will do a direct cleavage. This is the way this enzyme will cleave this particular or at this particular sequence. Now what will happen is there are different ends created in the DNA molecule. So as you can see here, the DNA molecule has been split or cut into two different parts and they're left with different types of ends. This way here, two different, um, two different ends. And you can see that at the ends, we're left with a few nucleotides that have no other nucleotides bound to them. So we call that these ends sticky ends. 
meaning that due to the fact that those nucleotides are left without no other nucleotides bound to them, then at some point you can use them to bind other nucleotides and form, for example, recombinant DNA. So this is very useful and it's known as sticky ends. You can also call them cohesive ends. Now, ALU1, or any direct cleavage, will produce blunt ends. So the blunt ends, as you can see, the nucleotides are bound to one another. So there is no nucleotide left without a bond and no sticky ends formed. So on this last slide here, I would like to use this table to show you that for every restriction enzyme, or restriction endonuclease, sorry, there will be a, a corresponding recognition site. So every restriction endonuclease has a particular site that they're able to recognize and cleave at in on a DNA molecule. Now, uh, here in the center, you can find the sources or the bacteria where you find these particular res restriction endonucleases. Now, as I mentioned before, that ECOR1 is found in E. coli and has this GAATTC palindromic sequence that it's able to recognize and cleave um, precisely. Now, what I, you also have here is a very small list because there, there is a much larger list on restriction endonucleases that are being used nowadays in research. And what you can do as a scientist is say if you have a DNA molecule, then you can use different types of, of restriction endonucleases that are able to then cleave at the known sites the recognition sites that you know and you can just buy these restriction endonucleases that will serve to produce fragments that you can later use in research.